What is Battle IQ and why is it important? The definition is as it sounds, it is the intelligence and strategic thinking used in combat. Do not get hung up on the words intelligence and strategic and think this only applies to characters with a naturally higher IQ. Characters like Shikamaru for example. Naruto isn't the smartest academically, but is able to exhibit a high battle IQ. But what does this anime known as World Trigger have to do with battle IQ? Well the answer is very simple. The entire anime is people flexing their battle IQ with multiple key standout moments that I think are criminally overlooked in the anime community. I believe there are two different types of battle IQs, the pre-planned and in the moment, and World Trigger is not lacking in either department. If you are unaware, the characters in World Trigger often fight in teams. Because of this, new strategies and formations are thought about a lot, which ticks off the pre-planned section, and each character in the World Trigger world are all combat veterans, most being able to quickly adapt to any new scenario and come up with any counters on the spot. When it comes to these two types of IQs, it is our main two characters who embody them quite a bit, our true MC. Mikumo lacks the natural ability to utilize the world's power system correctly. Check out the video on the power system if you don't know about it because it is also one of the best in anime. Because he lacks the skills necessary to be a competent fighter in the traditional sense, he resorts to being the brains behind the operation. The duo and the face of the series, Yuma, is the opposite. He is an actual combat vet, fighting in real wars alongside his father, being able to read his opponent much better than most in his verse. This series focuses heavily on its entire cast of characters. When you give this many characters their own personalities and strategies, it lends itself to having an outrageous amount of different moments that you typically wouldn't see. Before entering character specific moments, I want to give a brief look at one of the major players in every battle, the terrain. Most of the world trigger fights exist in a danger room-esque training ground where the terrain and weather can be adjusted per battle to give the agents more variety in their mock battles. There are a few moments of the terrain being an obstacle turned into something useful for our team, mainly for Yuma. Both are going to require some background information, so bear with me. In this particular match, Yuma got an unlucky spawn and is now 1v1ing one of the best attackers on board named Ko, who has the side effect of advanced learning and has fought Yuma before. The map they are fighting in is two small cities connected by a singular bridge. The bridge, however, got blown up. Yuma is to lure Ko to the edge of the bridge and force them both off, having Chika the sniper make sure he couldn't make it to the other side with a suppressed shot. Ko being disoriented by a sudden turn of events and Yuma most likely being more ad depth in water combat is able to secure a victory in a fight that he couldn't have gotten otherwise. A less complex example also involves Yuma. This time in the current match, all the snipers are taken out of the running, allowing an enemy to clear the natural house cover to have easier shots at his opponents. While this is happening, Yuma is in a 1v1 with another attacker, who plans to use this commotion to his advantage first, but Yuma is faster and well, I'll let the clip speak for itself. It's that ability to think quickly and make swift killing blows that makes watching fights in the show so enjoyable. A character who is always interesting to watch fight is named Hughes. As with this entire anime, there is build up and strategy that I need to talk about before getting into the main fight because as I've stated before, there is as much pre-planning as there are mid-fight moments. Hughes is facing the same character that Yuma had named Ko. Two key background things, the less important of the two is the black blade Ko is using this time around. The setting of this mock battle takes place within a mall, with a little bit of the surrounding area. Since Ko's team was the one to pick the map, the strategy they devised was to have their sniper, who is basically useless in an indoor setting, find and control the mall's power to turn off and on the lights. The green or yellowish glow for Tryon isn't just for visual clarity, it does produce light, and because of this, the black weapon, while still being made of Tron and able to harm, is no longer visible in the dark. Such a strategy is only possible by the fact that each team has what is known as an operator, who keeps tabs on everyone, and the key thing in this fight is to turn on and off night vision. Now onto the more important thing. This is the first time Hughes and Ko are fighting, making Ko's side effect useless as it requires him to sleep to have hyper learning. A lot of these things just have to speak for themselves. Roll the clip. Thank 
コウ君の方が早い The thing he used is Escargo, a defensive ability that most people do not use, and certainly don't make pop out of people. But it doesn't stop there. In a split second, Yuma had to decide to use his Scorpion Blade to extend his reach and cause Ko to miss the vital strike on Hughes. It is just such beauty in a very short scene. There is one last moment that I find absolutely phenomenal that involves Hughes that really just showcases the level of skill these agents can possess. Another unlucky spawn for our team caused Hughes to be spawn camped by six other people from three different squads as they saw his performance against Ko and pinged him a threat. Even with this intense amount of pressure from insane Skilled fighters, the two guys with eye coverings are one of the top swordsmen and gunslingers in the verse, with two more very talented attackers and shooters to boot. And Hughes is still able to put up a fight worth talking about. This particular fight is pretty drawn out, which speaks more to Hughes' skill, so I'm going to be focusing on the tail end of the fight, even though the whole thing is good, and you just need to watch this anime if you haven't already. When Hughes finally gets surrounded by all six people, he first has to block overhead fire, he then has to dodge two sword swings from pretty proficient agents and then more cover fire from behind, making him lose an arm, and even more from the front, all while communicating a plan with his team to have them drop a meteor on him, taking him out and everyone around him. While his team is setting up the plan, Hughes ends up losing a leg also, and after the plan fails with a big flash, he is forced to quickly reevaluate his position to try and either escape or to take as many down with him as he possibly can. Believing it is best to leave, he puts up his walls, sets covering fire for himself, and tries to make a getaway on one foot, only to run into two shooters. Hughes finds himself in the exact same situation as before. This time, one of the best attackers goes for his signature move. Hughes uses this as an opening and launches him up using his signature Escudo, blocking them once again, this time using yet another Escudo to try and launch himself out, taking down Ikoma with him. However, in the split second before he launches himself, he sees Ikoma going for another attack and dodges instead. Still down an arm and a leg and lost his only way out, he is still able to launch a car and breaks one of the squad's formation. This is where his secret weapon comes into play. Ikoma goes for yet another slash, but this time it is a feint and goes to block the shots Hughes sends at him. However, Hughes predicted this and the shot he actually sent was a Viper. Viper allows the user to pre-select a path for the bullets to travel, taking out Ikoma. This was also a long con. Everyone else thought he was only using Asteroid, but he was actually using Viper and setting a straight path to trick people into believing he couldn't change its direction, and he would have gotten a second one too had it not been for his squad mate protecting him, ultimately losing afterward. Their squad couldn't have planned this, not Hughes' bad spawn with the fact that six plus people tried to take him out all at once, and yet even having a plan fall through, he was able to keep a level head and think of a way to get some value in the fight, taking out one of the strongest people in that match. No one expected Hughes to get taken out so quickly as it was only his second match in the anime, and yet he did, but he went out in style, being able to not only throw off the watches with such a move, but also make it that strategically intense is why I love this anime so much. Those were just a few moments from this anime that I really enjoyed. I hope these brief clips of World Trigger bring you close to watching it if you haven't, or at the very least, brings you to the same understanding that I have, which is this anime has some fantastic battle IQ moments. I have a few more World Trigger videos on my channel if you are interested because that is all for this one. See you maybe, bye bye!